in this video, we're going to be talking about the last principle under the category of how people uh, interact. Um, this principle is about governments and the role governments play to improve market outcomes. Okay. So the idea here is that governments can sometimes improve market outcomes. Now, um, the last principle that we had seen talked about the market economy and how that works in a decentralized way and how, how the invisible hand is at work and it's so smooth and everything comes together. Uh, so we might wonder why do we need the government? Um, one purpose of studying economics is to uh, refine our view about uh, the proper role and the scope of government policy. Um, so, so coming back to that question of why do we need the government, one reason we need the government is that uh, the government is able to enforce property rights. Okay, which means that um, it allows the invisible hand to work if uh, by maintaining the institutions that are key to a market economy. Okay, so property rights uh, are uh, rights of individuals or institutions so that they can control and own scarce resources. So the idea here is um, that if um, if you think about different types of people in the economy, let's think about a farmer. A farmer won't grow uh, her food if she expects her crop to be stolen, uh, or a restaurant, which is uh, uh, you know could be owned by a person or a household, wouldn't serve meals unless it is assured that customers will pay before they leave. Uh, and and a record or film company wouldn't produce uh, movies if if too many potential customers are avoid uh, avoiding uh, payment by making illegal copies. So so in so so the idea here is for the market economy to work smoothly, um, the government provides uh, different resources like. Policing, courts, or our judicial system um, to enforce property rights over the things um, we own and we produce. Okay, and so the invisible hand uh, can only work if these property rights are in place. Um, the second idea. Um, relates to how governments can promote efficiency. So sometimes there can be market failures, okay? Market failures can occur because of two reasons. One, if there are externalities, and I'll explain in a second what, the, what we mean by that. Uh, and also because we can have market failures because there could be substantial market power. So when we talk about market failures, we are really talking about a situation in which the market fails to produce an efficient allocation of resources. Okay, so let's talk about the first type of um, market failure or the cause of market failure. Um, which is an externality. So an externality is 
the impact of one person's actions on the well-being of a bystander okay so the bystander could be a person who's not really uh, taking any action but is just there and is being affected okay so this uh, an example of a positive externality um, is you know when you have a very studious roommate and uh, that uh, might incur that roommate might encourage you to study so and you do well in in class and so that's an example of a positive externality but a negative externality could be you know when you have a uh, a roommate who is uh, being fidgety or is playing loud music and that could impact you even though you're not trying to participate in uh, in any activity that they're doing um, they are affecting you or your performance okay so uh, similarly externalities can um, can exist in the economy and uh, we would need the government to to intervene to improve uh, these outcomes. So one example of uh, a negative externality is pollution. Okay, so pollution is an example of a negative externality. Um, when the production of a good pollutes the air and creates health problems for those who live near factories uh, the market uh, left to it, it to its own um, uh, devices may fail to take this cost into account okay so a factory may continue producing uh, whatever good they are producing and cause more air pollution so we really need um, the government to step in and do something about it so one way they can uh, control pollution is by levying a tax or having a pollution tax, which can raise the cost of production um, and, uh, in, and disincentivize uh, firms from producing more of those goods, okay? Another type of, um, or potential cause of market failure is having, as companies having substantial market power, which refers uh, to the ability of if a single person or firm or even a small group has the ability to substantially affect or influence market prices. So, you know, you, you might have played Monopoly before uh, and you know that once you get uh, you know, you own utilities, you own hotels, you get a lot of power in the market, you can actually influence the price um, substantially. So we would need the government to step in uh, in those times um, to keep these self-interests in, in check. Um, and so um, really what we come across as examples are like, cable companies that have a lot of power. Um, you know, if you think about airlines, um, airline companies have a lot of power to influence prices. Um, and the governments can uh, step in and try to uh, change their antitrust laws. Um, it hasn't happened in a long time that they've done anything about this, uh, but the idea is that um, this is what the governments should be doing um, so that 
um, the output uh, of what is being provided or the, the good or the service that is being provided, the output is not restricted um, and also uh, a very high price isn't charged for what is being produced. Okay, the third idea behind why we would need governments is to, uh, for them to promote equality. So governments can promote equality in, in many ways. Uh, the idea here is that they want to avoid disparities in economic well-being. And so they could um, use tax, progr the progressive tax system which again remember is you know as your income goes up you pay more taxes. Right? There's a progressive tax system that bridges the gap between the rich and poor. Um, and it also allows us to uh, redistribute what is collected in tax revenues to um, or reallocate those resources towards uh, uh, people who are in need. So you could have welfare policies like unemployment insurance uh, or unemployment benefits uh, that really change how this economic buy is divided. Right. So any policy that is focused on promoting equality is going to be focused on how is the economic pie divided. And uh, the idea here is to make it more equal if the policy is trying to do that. Okay. And in the last uh, examples that we were considering here about promoting efficiency, uh, we were really thinking about um, you know, how, uh, how big the economic pie is and if governments can influence that in any way. And one thing to remember is that uh, the governments can improve on market outcomes uh, sometimes, uh, which means that they, it doesn't mean that they always will improve market outcomes. Uh, public policy is made uh, by a political process that is uh, far from perfect. So we, we must remember that sometimes policies are designed simply to reward the politically powerful, and sometimes they are made by uh, well-intentioned leaders who are not completely informed. Um, so as you study economics, uh, you have to critically analyze and, and become a a better judge of when uh, public or government policy is justifiable uh, because it promotes efficiency uh, or equality um, and when it doesn't. <laughs>